Yo, what is up, everybody? It's Jethro Ray. Welcome back to another Naruto reaction video here today. And as many of you know, I asked you yourselves what you guys wanted to see, and the people have spoken. So y'all shall receive. And as you can tell by the title, one of the videos you guys wanted to see was Obito Uchiha versus Itachi Uchiha by the Great Swag Kage. All right, so this is a very interesting matchup, and I'm sure a very highly debated matchup within the Naruto fandom. You know, so we got Obito Uchiha, one of the most impactful and powerful Uchiha that have ever lived, and Itachi Uchiha. You know, both these guys have big fan bases, um, and they're both very loved in the Naruto verse. So, of course, there's going to be heated discussion, I'm sure, when it comes to them matching up. Um, but we're going to see Swakage break it down. But before we get to it, if you enjoyed the video and you love really appreciate, you know, hit that like button, turn on bell notifications, stay up to with yours truly. And if you're new and you enjoy, maybe it's your first time here, you've been on and off, but you mess with the kid, please hit that sub button, man. It'll be greatly appreciated because once you do, you're part of the family forever and it is growing. And once again, I appreciate all y'all for that. But let's not waste any more time. Screen. Let's see what Swag has to say today. How's it going, everybody? Swag what up? here, and welcome to Itachi vs. Obito, the versus battle of the week. And before you guys jump me for doing another Uchiha battle after I said I was going to try to avoid those, I really did mean it when I said it, but, well, it seems like a lot of you have been very vocal about the fact that you've grown pretty tired of the Uchiha battles. Another sizable portion of my audience wouldn't leave me alone about doing Itachi vs. Obito. I couldn't escape the numerous plentiful comments on all of my recent versus videos, Asking me to do this battle in particular, and so I don't blame those people. This is lit. I'm a bit of a pickle, aren't I? So because of the overwhelming popular demand, I'm gonna make an exception here. And look, to those of you who are super anti Uchiha, I'm sorry, but come on, give me a break. Anyway, as for how I'm gonna be handling this video, so I'm not going to talk about the abilities of both characters as extensively as I have in my previous videos, because I've already discussed Itachi on numerous occasions, and there are way too many different versions of Obito for me to go over. Most definitely here without making the video like and let's be honest most of us already know their abilities, right? That's fair to say in more detail than others is obviously I need some analysis here, right? Like I can't just be throwing around my opinions with no evidence or facts to support them But when it comes to the Obito variants that I just think thoroughly thrash Itachi I don't think there's much of a point in extensively discussing what they're capable of because I can make my points about how I think Itachi fares against them pretty quickly on another note unlike my previous versus battle videos where I started with the early incarnations of the characters and progressed to their later forms I'm gonna be doing the opposite here where I start with the latest versions of Obito then compare them to both versions of Itachi living and Edo Tensei obviously separately not together at once and then move on to the version that preceded it that way right. I can get a lot of the more obvious matchups out of the way quickly since fair, Itachi fair doesn't really fare too well against the more powerful versions of Obito so anyway now that I've made all of that clear let's just jump right into the battle and start out with round one Itachi versus Ju Jubito. Now look, this is just mean, okay? Itachi is hopelessly outmatched against Jubito here, and honestly, I, I don't even want to talk about this battle because I just feel like a bully. But surprisingly, I found enough instances of some pretty disgusting Itachi wank from people who claim that he can, in fact, beat Jubito throughout my oh, time God, on the no. internet to let me know that this actually is an issue worth discussing, apparently. So I guess I'll go over this battle for just a little bit and explain why Itachi Definitely. He has absolutely no chance of victory here. Now, I what agree. I'm about I to agree say completely. is pretty obvious. Anybody who spends even a little bit of time dabbling in Naruto versus battles is well aware of this, and that is that in a battle like this, Itachi's greatest asset is the Yadamir, right? Like, with it, he can supposedly deflect anything. Uh, that's pretty well established throughout the Naruto community. But one thing that isn't quite as well known is the reason why the Yadamir is supposedly an impenetrable shield is because it is composed of every nature transformation and it can adapt to any situation that its wielder finds themselves in right. by applying the traits of different natures to itself in order to counteract the traits of any physical or spiritual attack it comes into contact with so basically it's so strong because it's composed of every nature at once right now this should sound a little bit familiar to some of you because there's another thing in the Naruto world that is also composed of every nature at once and that would be the truth-seeking orbs or the exactly. truth-seeking balls whatever you want to 
call them, the Gudodama, one of the key parts of Jubito's arsenal, as a matter of fact. And so common sense would dictate that because the Gudodama possessed the trait supposedly responsible for the Yadamir's impenetrability, Jubito would be able to use the truth seeking orbs to counteract it, right? So all right. Jubito would have to do is create a sufficiently powerful attack using his truth seeking orbs, and the logic dictates that he would be able to penetrate Itachi's Yadamir this way. But there's a little bit more to the discussion than that as well. See, the truth seeking orbs, despite being composed of all nature transformations, are not invincible. They can be countered with Senjutsu. Now, I'm not saying that this is 100% fact or anything. It's never been confirmed, but it stands to reason that Senjutsu would also be capable of dealing with Itachi's Yadamir, right? And granted, that doesn't mean that Senjutsu attacks automatically obliterate any attacks with composition similar to that of the Truth Seeking Balls. For instance, using a Truth Seeking Orb Shield, Obito was able to block a Senjutsu enhanced tailed beast bomb along with a senjutsu enhanced susano arrow at right. the same time but if you look closely at the manga panel he does this in you can see pretty clearly that his shield started to take a little bit of damage and again its composition should be identical to that of the yada mirrors meaning that when put up against senjutsu the yada mirror is not invincible and since obito after becoming the jinchuriki of the tintails was given far and away the strongest form of sage mode in the entire series it's very easy Agreed. to argue that he'd be able to break through itachi She's Yadamir, either using a Senjutsu attack or using the Truth Seeking Balls. You can even combine both of these arguments at once and say that not only is Itachi's Yadamir weak to Senjutsu, it's also susceptible to damage from the Truth Seeking Balls as they're both composed of the same thing and Jubito is obviously way stronger than Itachi is, so yes. he shouldn't have too much trouble breaking through what should otherwise be a pretty standard shield. And that's it. That's really all Itachi has is the Yadamir. So, mm, doesn't really look like he's going to be able to do anything to Jubito. Yeah, he has the Totsuka Blade, which he can use for an insta-kill here, but it's so fucking what? If Obito fires a Jubi Blast at Itachi, you it's think over, he's right? just yeah. gonna survive that? Absolutely not. And his Edo Tensei Agreed. regeneration powers aren't even a factor in this battle because the truth-seeking balls nullify those. Right. The living or exactly. dead, Itachi gets washed. Now, even if he can't break through the Yadamir, it's not like the thing is omnidirectional. So if Obito goes with four Crimson Ray Formation Biju Bomb, the attack that he used to nearly sing single-handedly wipe out the entirety of the allied shinobi forces itachi's fucked end of story obito Agreed. takes this round negative difficulty so next up we have white mask obito. okay before they move on to white mask obito let's speak of jubito versus uh itachi right both forms because uh swag is right i've seen myself on the internet some major itachi wankers all right and let me get something straight i love itachi he's my favorite character but would i say he beats jubito no because if i did that'd be illogical and this playing out insane. You know, it's not true. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. But now let's compare these two guys. Jubito, all right. Let's let's talk about the feats, because he really doesn't talk about them here. So I will. This guy went up against many Kage level fighters. And you know, and so, along with Sasuke and Naruto. And he was doing whatever he wants with them. You know, at the end, obviously, they ripped the ten tails out of Jubito through Talk No Jutsu uh, by Naruto. Um, and that's how they beat him. But uh, furthermore, this guy is something else. He's in a whole nother level. He's he's a god tier fighter, damn near. You know, the, the, the shinobi, this shinobi, Jubito, is a god tier shinobi. Um, having true seeking orbs, having basically ninjutsu that is you know, island breaking, mountain breaking power. You know, uh, Itachi would have nothing. He can't fight him head, head to head. Long distance wouldn't matter either. His Yadamir most likely would be destroyed by either Senjutsu, like Swag said, or the truth seeking orbs. You know, with Jubito being the strongest sage by far on the on the battlefield at the time. His Senju if he if he, you know, uses a Pretty decently powerful Senjutsu. All in all, it would probably break the Yadamir, most likely. I mean, then Itachi's dead. All Itachi would be able to do is defend himself for as long as possible. He can't beat Jubito. What is he going to use? There's nothing, nothing that he could use that would work against Jubito. Jubito is god tier level in Shinobi. Okay, this guy fought four Kages, Naruto, and Sasuke, and was, and was beating them all up, you know. With relative ease until the talk no jutsu by naruto slash plot armor you know so 
it's very, very, very inaccurate and very disingenuous to say Itachi would beat Jubito. You know, and there's some people out there that say it. It's pretty bizarre and, and just plain out crazy. You know, Itachi would have nothing, nothing. Jubito is superior in all fashions, you know, in all, in all aspects. You know, jutsu power, durability, you know, everything. Everything you can think of, he's superior. So I just want to get that out of the way. Let's move forward. With the Renegon, the Mangekyo Sharingan, and six Jinchuriki at his disposal that he can transform into tailed beasts at will. And now, look, this is also a pretty horrific mismatch in Obito's favor. All right. right, you've got Itachi, who already has some pretty bad stamina issues, going up against this guy who has the Renegon, the ability to phase through any attack, and six tailed beasts at his disposal at full power. Dangerous man right there. He shares vision with. So there's no fucking way Itachi's gonna catch Obito lacking in this battle because because his field of vision is practically infinite here. He can phase through attacks, as I've already said. The only reason he took any damage at all in the fight against Naruto B, Kakashi, and Guy is because Kakashi was there and he was able to counter Obito's combo with, with his, his own, own right? combo. Yeah. Of course, Itachi of course. does not have that luxury. He's stuck with plain old Amaterasu and Sukuyomi. And look, Obito's not stupid. He's not a complete fucking buffoon. He knows better than to look Itachi in the eye. Like, come on, Sukuyomi, it's, it's not landing on Obito, but even if it does, the series has made it clear that it can be broken out of by a fellow Uchiha. By an Uchiha much less experienced with Genjutsu than Obito as a matter of fact. Uh, Sasuke, now you can make the argument that Itachi let Sasuke break out right. of Tsukuyomi during their fight, which is perfectly reasonable, but Itachi's also flat out said that the only way to counter Tsukuyomi is with another Mangekyo Sharingan, so I don't think I'm making a humongous logical leap by saying that Obito would be able to resist it even if he was caught in it. But again, that's that's a big if, because he'll probably just avoid looking Itachi in the eye for the entire fight in order to avoid having to deal with Tsukuyomi in the first place. Now, another pretty cool part of Itachi's arsenal that you might think is pretty bad news for Obito is ephemeral, the finger genjutsu that he cast on Naruto, but this is a complete non-issue. A lot of people bring this up and act as though it makes Itachi some untouchable god because it can affect people with genjutsu without even looking at them, but look, Naruto, who has no genjutsu talent whatsoever, was able to break out of it after a bit of struggling, of course, but he was still able to break free, right. and Obito is... No Genjutsu slouch. Like, his skill with Genjutsu is Formidable, light definitely. years ahead of Naruto's. Yes. There aren't a whole lot of Genjutsu feats for him in the manga, but one that's pretty big is the fact that he was able to mind control Yagura, a perfect Jinchuriki using Genjutsu, and B was, like, fucking flat out convinced that Genjutsu could not affect Jinchuriki at all. So, I, mm, I don't know, man. Obito seems pretty good on the Genjutsu front to me. I'm pretty sure he Itachi's not getting him with Ephemeral or Sukuyomi, so let's take those off the table. At the very least, they're not going to wipe Obito out immediately, right? I think that's fair. So Ninjutsu's yes. completely worthless against him because not only can he phase through it, but he can also presumably absorb it. Now, Obito never used the abilities of the Rinnegan, but he made it pretty clear that he still can. Kakashi was like, he's probably not doing it because we already know how to counter them because we fought pain and, you know, it'd take up a whole lot of chakra. And Obito was like, precisely, that is exactly why Kakashi, good on you. You're quite observant. And Taijutsu is also a pretty horrible idea because, again, Obito can phase through any of Itachi's attacks and up close, like, rest in peace if you're fighting against this dude. Guys, he's combat. an animal Obito up close. Obito can either suck Itachi into the Kamui dimension and just leave him there forever, or he can use the human path of the Renegon to rip out Itachi's soul. And that's without even mentioning the fact that there are six fucking Biju running around the battlefield for Itachi to deal with at the same right. time. Like, it's, it's just not fair to him at all here. Once again, he gets thoroughly stopped, so round two goes to Obito. Round three would be Renegon, Obito. All right, now let me speak on this next matchup. White Mass Obito, with the ha who has access to both the, Ren the Renegon and the Sharingan, including, and, of course, on top of the six BG at his disposal. Okay, so Itachi, his best weapons, obviously, are his Genjutsu, his Amaterasu, and his Susano. All right, now... If Obito were to be cautious, right, which I'm sure he would, he respects Hitachi. I don't know, I mean, as, as you could tell by the manga, um, he would make sure to thoroughly defeat Itachi. You know, he doesn't want any holes in his game plan. So what he could really would what he could really do here is this pin the Biju on him. You know, he'd probably have to get into Susanoo immediately. Um, on Amaterasu, he does have that. 
but if we're speaking of alive Itachi, his stamina ain't the best. Um, Obito could, you know, strategically throw the Biju at him, maybe one by one if he wants to. And I'm sure Itachi would have a tough time. Shoot Biju bombs at him. He'd have a tough time. He'd have to get in a Susanoo at that point. It's the only way to survive a Biju bomb. Especially when dealing with the, the higher-tailed beasts, you know, um, that Obito has at disposal. Itachi would have to be in the defensive. It's, he wouldn't be on the offensive. It, it, Obito is too... He's too much of a powerhouse. All right, And he has his Renegon abilities. He can, sh he can shoot Shinra Tenseis at him. Put, try, get him in Chewbacca Tensei. We did, he didn't even mention those abilities. The Renegon abilities. Um, he would use those as well. I think it's safe to say if he gets him in a Chewbacca Tensei, what is Itachi going to do? What, what does he have at his disposal strong enough to break out of that? What does he have? You know... Um, he'd have to be extremely cunning and extremely, extremely cautious when fighting Obito. Now, Edo Tensei Itachi would be a little different because he has infinite stamina, so he doesn't have to worry about that. The Bijou, I feel like he'd be able to at least, I think it's fair to say, at least keep the Bijou at bay with Amaterasu. You know, he has infinite stamina. Um, but Obito is just too much of a powerhouse, even so. With the Renegon abilities, with the, you know, and he's extremely formidable at Taijutsu. He was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Naruto, who I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was in KCM2. You know, he was in KCM2, and he was sparring with Naruto. Now, Itachi was sparring with KCM1 when, when he was in Edo Tensei, Edo Tensei version. And he was competitive, but he wasn't destroying Naruto. Now, if it was KCM2, I think it's fair to say Itachi wouldn't be able to keep up. You know, I think it just even even hand-to-hand, -hand, uh, Obito is superior. And Taijutsu, very, very formidable. I mean, look at what he did, especially with the Kamui ability that he has. Um, with Itachi, with, by the way, which Itachi cannot counteract, only Kakashi can because he has one himself, you know. So, this in, in, in basically every aspect besides Genjutsu, Obito is superior. And when it comes to Genjutsu, which are probably the most dangerous things at Itachi's disposal of, as far as an offensive maneuver, it's, it's fair to say he, he would break out of it. I mean, Itachi himself stated, like Swayak said, only a Mangekyo Sharingan could deal with my Genjutsu. And this guy, Obito's Mangekyo, is formidable. I mean, the caliber of Shinobi that he is, obviously his Mangekyo is formidable. So I have a feeling he'd break out. Um, he'd break out for sure. And I have a feeling, I don't know if this is possible, but I have a feeling even if he does get caught, maybe he could use a Bijou to break him out. You know, so he wins, man. And, and basically every, I always say this in all my videos, in an infinite domain of possibility, he wins in most of those possibilities, just about all of them, you know, just about all of them. Um, Hitachi would have to survive and probably evade. He'd, he'd be, he wouldn't even want to, you know, go toe to toe with him. He'd probably have to evade and leave or die. One of the two. If he Obito lets him live, he'll, he'll just let him evade. If he wants to kill him, he could kill him. So this one handedly goes to White Mass Obito, in both uh, both of Itachi's forms, Edo Tensei or not. This is he can't stack up to the sheer power that he possesses. I mean, let's continue. Without his mask and without control of the tailed beasts, after the reanimation jutsu was released by Kabuto, and I mean, like, just because he doesn't have the biju doesn't mean Itachi suddenly gets the win here. Obito can still phase through all of Itachi's attacks, absorb, like, every single one of the points that I brought up previously applies here. Obito just can't apply the added pressure that he could with a biju in this fight. He can still close in on Itachi, suck him into Kamui forever, or rip out his soul, and GG. So right. round three Forgot about that ability. to Obito. Now, whether Itachi is Edo or alive doesn't really matter in these first three scenarios because no matter what he gets stomped. In Jubito's case the truth seeking balls nullify Itachi's regen and in Rinnegan Obito's case the fact that he can just rip Itachi's soul out is pretty bad news for the guy as well Definitely. since impure world reincarnation fundamentally functions by trapping a person's soul inside of another person's body. So I mean it's common sense that having the soul ripped out would undo the jutsu. It, yeah you get the idea. But now right, these right. next few fights that's where things start to get interesting. So Itachi versus Duel Mangekyo right, Shonen. Just to quickly go over this one uh he went over it very briefly but i want to go over it apologize for the pausing but uh you know i want to give my thoughts in here as well um now Ita uh, excuse me obito without the bijou the only thing he wouldn't have is you know the added pressure like you said he wouldn't be able to overwhelm itachi um with the bijou i mean 
but he has his running gun abilities. He's quicker than Itachi. I mean, that's I think we can fairly say he is significantly faster than Itachi. Probably reaction time, but you know, reaction time and pure just speed, he's superior. And he has the soul taking ability with the Renegon. Uh, he would he would catch him. He could do several things. Just put him in combo, let him die, or get him, take his soul. I mean, it's as simple as that. I mean, it wouldn't be very difficult for him to do so. You know, even in Edo Tensei, Edo Tensei would be a little different because he could just stay in a Susano if he had to. Um, but it's not omnidirectional. Obito has the probably has the Dushu in the arsenal to break it. Um, who knows? Maybe I don't know if this is possible. Maybe he could combo himself into the Susano and just kill Itachi in there. I don't think he even thought of that. I barely just thought of that right now. Could he combo himself into Itachi Susano and just kill him inside of there? Who knows, man? Who knows? He's a superior. And in, and now to kind of put conclusion to this scenario in an infinite domain of infinite possibilities and infinite scenarios. He wins in most of them. So that's all I have to say. Let's continue. Sharingan Obito, or DMS Obito, as many people call him. This is a much more interesting battle than the last two because the two of them are now on a much more even playing field. Now, this isn't DMS Obito with his six paths chakra, and I'm just going to assume that he can't use his perfect Susano here because if he could, then Itachi would get shit on in seconds, and I really don't want another round of that happening. So <laughs> let's just assume it's Obito with the ability to use Kamui from both eyes. He has full stamina, unlike the DMS Obito that we saw in the anime and the manga, but he just doesn't have access to his six paths powers or to the Renegon abilities that he had in the previous two fights. Now this is a bit weird because the long range Kamui that Kakashi has access to, it shouldn't be dismissed in this fight because right. it was able to affect the truth seeking orbs on multiple occasions. Kakashi was able to teleport some of Madara's shield away in order to give Guy an opening to damage him and he was also able to outright teleport some of the orbs while they were moving. And now I mentioned earlier in the video that the Yadamir's composition is very similar to that of the truth seeking balls so it might be possible for obito to kamui a hole through the yadamir and fire some jutsu through it from a range now here's the thing up against Smart this thinking. obito i don't think itachi is going to rely on his full body susano too heavily because of how i assume it reduces his mobility itachi's never shown the ability to manifest legs from his susano and obviously having to worry about this gigantic ethereal exoskeleton makes it difficult to be nimble and agile now maybe his full body susano doesn't hinder how much he can move i'm not sure but considering he wasn't constantly using it after being revived with Edo Tensei I think that it's not too far-fetched so assuming Itachi doesn't use his Susano this would actually be a pretty cool fight to look at but he wouldn't really be able to do much to Obito since Kamui sort of counters everything and with the yes. long-range Kamui that Kakashi uses added to his arsenal Obito would be able to pretty easily snipe Itachi's head off and Itachi aware of this would likely know that it's probably time to throw up his Susano to keep Obito from Kamuiing off any body parts at that point, I imagine Obito just charging forward, phasing through the Yada mirror, and sucking Itachi into the Kamui dimension. And that would be it for a living Itachi, but Edo Itachi would sort of remain there forever. So he wouldn't win by killing Itachi, but it would count as a BFR or battlefield removal. So he has a bit more trouble against Itachi here in this scenario, but I'm still going to give the win to Obito. Now, I'm not entirely sure who's stronger between Orange Mask Obito right. and Yellow Mask. Now, I got to speak on this one. I think he downplayed Itachi just a little. I'm be honest swag did here um now this is obito with both renegons so dual mangekyo he obviously has now access to the long range uh, kamui that kakashi had previously before the eye went back into obito's body um so that's something but itachi is formidable and here's the thing with this guy this version we don't really know what he's capable of we know he has kamui clearly but he was sick and he was dying already. He's already d very weakened, dying because of Zetsu. So we don't know what he's capable of. Okay. Um, him at his best. So he, I think Swag was using him at his best, obviously. Um, obviously, Obito, the, the best you know template we can go off was before Obito attained the Renegon when he had one. one uh, only one Sharingan, right? He was very formidable. I mean, even... He had people thinking that he was Madara Uchiha, you know, when he had his mask on. So uh, Adam and Gekyo Sharing on top of that, he's even more formidable. We can safely say that. Um, now, I still think Obito probably wins in most scenarios, right? But it wouldn't be easy. I really don't think it would. Yeah, he has Kamui. That, that is, that's, you know, there's that. 
but Itachi is not, you know, complete fodder here. Not in this one, he isn't. Um, the Sushino, if we're taking, talking alive, Itachi, you have to be more strategic because he has limited chakra supply. Um, trying to think what he could do here. He has, he has Amaterasu, obviously. Uh, Obito also has uh, limits on his chakra, but I think it's safe to assume he has more chakra than Itachi. I think that's safe to assume. This from feats and what he's been able to do. Um, spamming Kami like it's nothing. Like it's, you know, nothing. Um, but... I, don't know, I feel like Itachi would have something up his sleeve here. Um, you know, I feel it could be more competitive. It wouldn't be exactly easy. Um, I don't want to get you know too far into all the infinite variables that could take uh, you know take part here, but I'm gonna say Obito wins most. I'm gonna say seven out of ten. And I'll say eight out of ten. He wins seven to eight out of ten times with not high difficulty. I say mid to possibly high. Possibly, this is a. I'm gonna say mid. I'm gonna say mid. Mid difficulty for a live Itachi. Now Edo Tensei Itachi with infinite chakra supply. He's gonna have some trouble. Um, he's gonna have some trouble. I'm gonna say that once he wins seven out of ten times, mid to high difficulty. And I know I'm probably gonna get some hate here, but I'm being honest. This is my assessment. I just don't think Obito this thrashes through Itachi. Like Itachi's not fodder, man. He's something. He's something here. This is more competitive. But he wins in most scenarios. So. Uh, at the end of the day, Obito wins. Okay. So I'm not saying Itachi wins. He doesn't. At the end of the day, Obito wins. Obito, because while Yellow Mask, Obito does have possession of the nine-tailed fox and also fights with its chains. Orange Mask, Obito is like 17 years older and has had a lot more time to practice using jutsu and whatnot. But right. just because of the tools that he has access to, I'm going to back up to Yellow Mask, Obito first and save Orange Mask, Obito for the end. Now let's split this round into two sub rounds with the nine tails and without the nine tails. With the nine tails, Obito would be able to put way too much pressure on Itachi. He would be Agreed. able to get Get right up to him, suck him into the Kamui dimension, and boom. It would be GG no re. Now, I don't want to be too dismissive of Itachi here. I don't want to make it seem like I'm completely ignoring what he'd be able to do in response, but that is exactly how the fight would go. If Obito was able to react to Minato's attacks, then he'll certainly be able to do the same thing I agree. To I agree. And with the Nine Tails running around, possibly blasting off a couple Biju Dama, Itachi will sort of be forced to throw up his full body Susano in order to protect himself, because I don't think he'd be able to tank the explosion of a Biju Bomb any other way. Obito would use this as an opening, slip right through the Yada Mirror, suck Itachi into Kamui, and the fight would be over. Now, without the Nine Tails, this becomes a much more interesting battle, because Itachi wouldn't be forced to use his Susano right out of the gate, and he also wouldn't have to deal with the egregious amount of pressure created by the Nine Tails' presence there. And since this is a young Obito, Itachi might be able to catch him with a couple Genjutsu after a few Taijutsu exchanges, if not Izanami outright. This battle is a lot more up in the air. Itachi's a much harder target to catch, and on on top of that, the presumable lack of experience that Obito has with Genjutsu here will leave him susceptible to Itachi's most powerful weapon, which leads me to believe that this fight could go either way. If Obito ends up falling for Itachi's Genjutsu, then Itachi probably takes this high difficulty. If not, though, Itachi doesn't really have any counters to Kamui, and he gets taken care of pretty handily by Obito with or without the Nine Tails. Obviously, Obito will have a much easier time against living Itachi than Edo Itachi, but Agreed. I don't think Definitely. the version of Itachi will make too much of a difference in this fight. The outcome remains the same either way. Whether Itachi fights as Edo or living though, all that does is alter the difficulty. Now finally we come to Orange Mask Obito and while he doesn't have the nine tails or the chains on him, neither of those really made a difference in the fight against Itachi to begin with because Obito wouldn't need to use his chains against Itachi, right? Like as soon as he closes in on him to begin with, he'll manage to suck him into Kamui and that'll be that. And the right. nine tails only really made a difference because it made up for Obito's lack of Genjutsu resistance. This Obito is 17 years older than the one that fought Minato, so I'm 100% certain that considering this is the same guy that, like I mentioned earlier in the video, was able to control the fourth Mizukage, a perfect Jinchuriki, using Genjutsu, he'd be able to resist all of Itachi's attempts at casting Genjutsu on him here. Now I know what a lot of people are saying, oh but Swekage, Obito was scared of Itachi, he said after Itachi died that the <laughs> leaf was no longer off limits and that he could go attack him, well you think he wanted Itachi to 
fucking leave the Akatsuki? No, of course not. He was a very valuable asset to the team. And why take that unnecessary risk anyway? He knew Itachi was going to die eventually, that it was going to be part of a planned battle with Sasuke, which he planned to take advantage of in order to get Sasuke to join the Akatsuki in Itachi's place. It just doesn't make any sense for him to take a risk he doesn't need to when he knew Itachi was going to die to begin with. Sure, maybe he was a little uncertain about fighting the guy, but that doesn't mean he thought Itachi was stronger than him. There were a whole lot of bad things that could have happened if Obito attacked the Leaf before Itachi's death. So now that we've got that out of the way, that Obito's statement does not mean he is scared of Itachi because he's stronger yeah, than I agree. or whatever. I agree. Let's talk about the actual fight. So basically, uh, Itachi's physical attacks, as in every single one of these rounds, will have absolutely no effect on Obito unless he can find a way to outlast the five minute time limit. And even then, I'm pretty sure that that five minute time limit is only strictly speaking consecutively. Like if Obito takes a break from phasing through attacks for even a fraction of a second, then this timer should reset as I know that the battle against Naruto, B, Guy, and Kakashi took way longer than five minutes. And that Obito was able to phase through all of their attacks right up until the very end. So it's not like he has to beat Itachi within five minutes or anything like that. Let's make that clear. Meaning I agree that, again, with that Itachi has no chance to land any physical attacks on him whatsoever. The only part of Itachi's arsenal capable of dealing with an intangible enemy like this would be Genjutsu. And I've already explained why Genjutsu is ineffective against Obito, so I can't really see any way that he comes out on top here. Obito already has way too much intel on Itachi for anything he tries to be effective, including Izanami. So I think I'm gonna have to give Orange Mask Obito the win as well. So in conclusion, Itachi wins maybe one round, depending on Yellow Mask Obito's resistance to Genjutsu, and Obito wins all of the rest. So sorry for sort of glossing over both characters' abilities for the most part in this battle. I know I didn't cover them as extensively as I could have, but I just didn't want this video to be like an hour long, like I said. But uh, anyway, leave your thoughts about the battle in the comments below. If I got anything wrong, of course, let me know in the comments, and I'll make sure to address it. If you have any ideas for future versus battles, make sure- Good video, though. Very good video. Very well. And until my next video, I'll talk to you later. So like Kage out. Bye. Peace. I think that's it, guys, right? That's the rest of the video. All right. That's it for that. Now, let me speak on those last matchups there. This is where I actually disagree to some extent here. Um, now, let's speak about Yellow, the one that fought Minato. Let's first start with the Ninetales, right? He had the Ninetales under Genjutsu who was destroying the leaf. Here's the thing. And, and I don't know why Swag, maybe he just doesn't think it, it would be a factor. Let me say, say this first. Sasuke, when he fought Killer B, he completely took down the Eight Tails with Amaterasu, right? I mean, he was done for. It's the second he ignited that. I mean, to be fair, yeah, a, B, uh, B was battling prior to that. He fought Sasuke for a while, Jugo, Sogetsu. But the second Amaterasu went on, he just fell. It was over. Now... I don't think it's very outlandish to say if Itachi summons Amaterasu on, you know, the Ninetales, that it would make it fall or at least damage it significantly, you know, significantly. He might even kill it, you know. So I think Swag kind of glossed over that. And uh, it'd be even more so if it was Edo Tensei Itachi could spam Amaterasu. Like, it's almost, to me, it's almost definite that he would kill the nine tails with Amaterasu to spam it spam it just burn him to burn him to death um now let's speak about yellow mass obito without the nine tails right now this is interesting now i'm gonna admit this obito has he's a superior in taijutsu seeing what he did against minato at 17 years old reacting and being competitive this guy's something else i mean he's his taijutsu is godly i mean minato is the man i mean minato is the Fourth Hokage, man. So it's safe to say Itachi would lose even then. So in a Taijutsu battle, um, he'd have to be more long range in his approach. <clears throat> and of course, he uses Genjutsu. Now, it's tough to say Itachi's extremely intelligent. Uh, but obviously, Obito is already pretty intelligent to go toe to toe with Minato. All right. That's extremely impressive, man. And that's what makes this matchup so crazy to kind of take a you know take a hold of and try to assess here um now itachi let's say a live itachi right fighting obito would quickly deduce uh you know in a similar time to minato that what obito is which is you know with, with his kamui so he deduce 
Um, the thing is, he's slower than Minotaur. His Taijutsu just ain't up to par. So I feel like Obito, if he blitzes him, I don't know if Itachi could... He'd have to do something. He'd have, he'd have to get him into Genjutsu or something. So overall, not to keep going on forever and ever here, when it comes to Yellow Mass Obito without the Nine Tails, it's very, very close. Uh, but I th I'm going to give this slight nod to Obito. I'm going to say he wins 6 out of 10 times, mid to high difficulty. Itachi can win 4 out of 10 times with high, high difficulty. Um, now we move on to the Nine Tails. All right? He's gonna have, there's going to be more pressure from the Nine Tails. Um, and th in that scenario, I think because of the Nine Tails, if we're talking about a live Itachi, it changes it a little bit. So I think Itachi wins less uh, times than not. Three out of ten times, high, high difficulty. Obito wins seven out of ten times uh, with mid to high difficulty. But I, I just don't think, you know, that's why I really even addressed the, the Amaterasu. I mean, he would... You saw what Sasuke did to the eight tails, and the eight tails, yes, it is weaker than the nine, so I have to take in that into that account. But I feel like it'd do something to the nine tails, maybe not kill it, but it would do something to it, it would affect it. Now, on to Orange Mass Obito. This one is a little less competitive because he's experienced, he's a Kamui master, Taijutsu master. This scares Kage, is like nothing, like shit makes him shit themselves. I think he's just too. Too powerful. I mean, just straight up, even hand to hand, he's something else. He's something else, and he is for sure resistant to Genjutsu. Seeing what it did to the fourth Mizukage, just putting it in a Genjutsu, putting her in a Genjutsu like nothing, almost to the extent of Koto Matsukami. Like this guy's something else, something else. So, this this guy's he's superior. He's a superior shinobi. I mean, I feel like he's very underrated in my opinion. So he wins eight out of ten times mid to high difficulty tachi maybe wins once or twice out of ten times maybe less um at the end of the day there's two things that are a major factor and in, in when it comes to uh the non-god tiers of obito so besides jubito uh white mass obito right besides those because those guys they're just godly itachi has no chance he's fodder basically um but all the other ones i'm talking about the x factors are kamui and just his taijutsu ability man i feel like obito's taijutsu is very 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 impressive and it just it proves as he gets older. He's something else entirely. Something else entirely. And Kamui just adds on to that. I mean, being able to face through anything to the to the point where he's able to face through KCM Naruto level speed fighters. It's something else entirely. So I love Itachi, by the way. It's kind of hard for me to to say he gets his ass whooped in most of these scenarios, basically all these scenarios. Um, but I, I think Swag downplayed him just a little bit. But I agree with him 95% you know basically but yeah guys gonna wrap it up i kind of wanted to bring my thoughts in i know i went quite a bit longer than the video but i hope you guys appreciated it i hope i didn't drag it too long but uh this was a great video man this uh, made me think a lot and i uh, hope you guys enjoyed it if you disagree please let me know please let me know maybe you disagree let me know in the comments um if you guys have any recommendations let me know in the comments but i love you all and i'll catch you in the next one this is j signing out peace